Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sukhmeet Bedi and welcome to Anatomy and Physiology. Now I'll be starting with the unit Cardiovascular System. Cardio refers to heart and the vascular refers to the blood vessels. So the heart, the blood vessels and the blood running in them together constitute the cardiovascular system. First we'll take up the chapter the blood. Now functionally the blood is classified as connective tissue. Why? Because the blood it is most of the blood cells they are formed from the bone cells which are bone which are the itself the connective tissue and like other connective tissue the blood is also formed of the cellular component that is the formed elements of the blood and the fluid matrix which is the plasma so now functions of blood the main function of the blood is the transportation the blood is called the river of life and it transports numerous substances all over our body. First is it transports the oxygen from the lungs to various tissues and transports carbon dioxide from various tissues to the lungs. Second is it transports the nutrients from the alimentary tract. All the nutrients which are absorbed in small intestine and the whole of the alimentary tract like the amino acids, glucose, other carbohydrates, all these, these are all transported, vitamins, minerals, all absorbed in the small intestine. They are transported by blood to liver and different tissues of our body. body. And third is, it transports the waste products of cellular metabolism from various tissues to the excretory organs. Which are the excretory organs? The lungs, the kidneys and the skin. And it transports other substances also. For example, it transports the precursor to vitamin D from skin to liver and then to kidneys. The second function of the blood is maintenance and regulation. What does it maintain? It regulates the acid-base balance. Second is it is a very important, it, it plays a very important role in maintaining the body temperature. Water in the blood plasma, it has coolant properties. Moreover, the blood vessels near the skin, they undergo vasoconstriction and vasodilation as and when required to either prevent the heat loss or to increase the heat loss accordingly. Right? If there is like the, if the temp body temperature is getting low, what will happen? The blood vessels near the skin, they undergo vasoconstriction that is their lumen gets tightened the diameter of the blood vessels gets reduced when they get tightened the body heat is conserved the third function of the blood is protection one is by clotting mechanism so whenever there is injury it protects the blood loss and second is the cells and chemicals in the blood they play an important part in the immune system so they provide immunity so that is all about the functions of the blood now we'll talk about the components of the blood. One is the cellular components which are the formed elements of the blood. And second is the fluid matrix which is called plasma. First we'll talk about the formed elements of the blood. The formed elements are red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. First is red blood cells. They are also called erythrocytes. Right? And what is the shape of these erythrocytes? Their shape, they, it is disc shaped. They have biconcave discs. They are concave in the middle. And this concavity provides what? It provides greater surface area for diffusion of the gases. Because I have just told you the main function is transport of gases. So they are shaped like a donut. Just pressed from the middle and raised from the sides. Moreover, this shape provides that they can easily squeeze from the capillaries. Clip capillaries are very tight so they easily get squeezed without breaking easily. Then where is, what is the site of hemopoiesis? Where are these blood cells formed? Hemopoiesis, I have used this term. Hemo stands for blood and poiesis synthesis. So these blood cells are formed in the fetus. They are formed in yolk sac, liver, spleen and thymus gland. By the fifth month of fetal life, more of this synthesis gets shifted to the bone marrow, the red bone marrow. And after birth, the only site of synthesis of the blood cells is red bone marrow. 
and this red bone marrow it is present in the bones of skull the sternum the ribs the vertebrae the humerus femur and the pelvis bones before before i start the life cycle of the erythrocytes i want to tell you one thing about the rbcs mature rbc has no nucleus no cell organelles right no mitochondria no ribosomes no endoplasmic reticulum now we come to the formation of erythrocytes now from where does the erythrocytes originate they originate from the stem cell or the hemocytoblast this one stem cell is going to differentiate into rbc the same stem cell or the hemocytoblast is going to differentiate into wbc and the platelets also first let's talk about the rbcs how are these rbcs formed so this hemocytoblast it gets converted into pro erythroblast the pro erythroblast or the pro normoblast is the state which still has the nucleus and the cell organelles the next state is early erythroblast and then next state is polychromatic erythroblast where the synthesis of hemoglobin starts now what is this hemoglobin it is a red colored pigment which gives which is present in the blood which gives color to the blood now this polychromatic erythroblast it gets converted into orthochromatic erythroblast in this orthochromatic erythroblast the hemoglobin synthesis is to its maximum after this orthochromatic erythroblast what happens now the nucleus is ejected nucleus goes out at this stage the nucleus is lost when what is formed is reticulocyte is formed which is an immature rbc this immature rbc it leaves the bone marrow enters the blood capillaries within 2 or 3 days it then gets matured now a mature rbc has no nucleus no mitochondria no ribosomes no endoplasmic reticulum no cell organelles so that its nutritional requirement is minimum it is not producing any kind of enzymes no it is not producing any kind of proteins it's just doing the function of transportation so because it's not able to produce it, and it is not able to multiply also because it has no nucleus so because it's not producing its own protein so no repair is occurring what happens it slowly and slowly becomes fragile fragile means which breaks easily and within 80 to 120 days it starts breaking and then it dies now what happens when it dies when the rbcs dies the all the other components they are phagocytosed what le is left is hemoglobin now this hemoglobin is formed of heme and globin first we'll talk of the globin part the globin part is formed of the proteins it is it is a polypeptide chain right so this what happens these proteins then break down into amino acids and these amino acids are reused in our body to for the synthesis of proteins now what happens to the heme part for this you need to know the structure of heme what is the structure of heme heme is a porphyrin ring with iron atom in the center now what happens to this iron atom the iron molecule is released from the heme the iron molecule release that released iron molecule is it again enters the circulation and then enters the bone marrow where it is reutilized for the formation of new rbcs and what happens to the rest of the part the rest of the part first gets converted to bilirubin and then to the bilirubin this bilirubin enters the liver and this bilirubin is secreted in the bile which is produced by the liver this bile enters the small intestine in the small intestine the bilirubin is converted to stercobilin or stercobilinogen which is then excreted in feces and this gave stercobilin it gives brown color to the feces some of it is reabsorbed into the blood and it gets converted to urobilinogen which is excreted in urine right so this is the fate of the rbc how the life cycle of the rbc ends 
the second let's come to the formation of wbcs or white blood cells for this let's me tell you about the classification of white blood cells or the leukocytes they are of two types one is the granulocytes another is the agranulocytes so how are they classified on the basis of the presence of granules if the granules are present they are called granulocytes and if the granules are absent they are called agranulocytes now granulocytes are of further three types neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and agranulocytes are of two types the monocytes and the lymphocytes now let's first talk about their formation now i told you the same huge hemocytoblast or the stem cell that is responsible for formation of all these now that stem cell it gets converted into myeloblast now this myeloblast then gets converted into progranulocyte and the progranulocyte gets converted into basophilic myelocyte eosinophilic myelocyte and neutrophilic myelocyte now from the term basophilic myelocyte it will form basophil the eosinophilic myelocyte will form eosinophil and the neutrophilic myelocyte will form the neutrophil so these are the three agranulocytes which are formed now the stem cell it will get converted into lymphoblast the lymphoblast what will it form lymphocyte the same stem cell or the hemocytoblast will differentiate into monoblast the monoblast will what will it form the monocyte the lymphocytes and monocytes are the agranulocyte now we talk about the granulocytes the granulocytes are the most numerous of the wbcs of these three types i told you the neutrophils eosinophils and basophils neutrophils they form about 60 to 70% of the total leukocytes now what kind of what is the structure of the neutrophils they have lots of granules in the cytoplasm and they have a multi lobed nucleus and these different lobes of nucleus are joined by thin strands so because of this multi lobe nucleus it is also called polymorphonuclear leukocyte now what are the properties or the functions of this neutrophils the first function is the diapodesis now what is this term diapodesis these neutrophils they squeeze themselves from the capillaries easily and move out of the blood to the site of the inflammation now where they do they have to move how do they come to know okay, which is the site of inflammation where do they have to go that for that the properties chemotaxis the chemo attractants they are released at the site of inflammation and the these neutrophils are attracted to those chemo attractants and they move out of the blood to that site and the third function is amoeboid movement they are motile they show amoeba like movement another important function is phagocytosis what is this term phagocytosis these cells they engulf the foreign particle and digest it or kill it that property is the phagocytosis now second type is the eosinophils which form around 1 to 4% of the total leukocytes now what kind of nucleus they have they have a bilobed nucleus two lobes and it gives some kind of the shape of a letter b and the two lobes are held by a thin strand and again the same lot of granules in them now what these granules have in the jo granulocytes ke granules are what do they have they have rich they are rich in enzymes the lysosomes lysosomes sorry these lysosomes they are the enzymes which kill the unwanted particles they are the digesting enzymes now what are the functions of the eosinophils what are the functions of the eosinophils first function is they produce histaminase now what is this histaminase for that you need to know what is histamine histamine is a chemical which produces inflammatory response so they produce histaminase which reduces the inflammatory response and second is they eosinophils they phagocyte antigen antibody complex what is an antigen it's a foreign body when it attacks our body antibodies are produced by the body and both of them form the complex 
this antigen antibody complex is phagocytosed or destroyed by the eosinophils and eosinophils also destroy certain parasitic worms next are the basophils which form about 1% of the total leukocytes they have an irregularly shaped nucleus and now what is their function their basophils they release heparin which is an anticoagulant they release histamine which produces inflammatory response and they release certain other chemicals which produce allergic response so what are these so this provides the basophils they provide immunity in both allergic response as well as the inflammatory reaction now what does this histamine does histamine is a vasodilator that is it increases the diameter of the blood vessels and increases the permeability of the blood vessels so that more and more of the leukocytes they can leave the blood and ent and attack and enter the site of inflammation so that the immune response can be enhanced so that is all about the white blood cells and now the third cellular component of the blood is the platelets or the thrombocytes thrombo means clot and cytes means cells and the term platelets they are named so because they are plate like flat so they are non nucleated disc shaped means they do not have any nucleus now how are they formed they are formed from the same hemocytoblast or the stem cell it first different first differentiates into megakaryoblast and that differentiates into megakaryocyte and you know the one megakaryocyte it can form up to 4000 platelets very small in size and they spend about 24 to 36 hours in spleen before they are released into the circulation and now what is their function main function is they form platelet plug so whenever there is any kind of hemorrhage or bleeding or any break in injury uh, break in the epithelium of the blood vessel what happens platelets go to that site and form a plug that is they prevent the blood loss so many of the platelets are working without your knowledge because many internal small hemorrhages are occurring in the body which we are not even aware of platelets go plug them clot is formed and they get repaired you don't even know so that is why they name thrombo site because they are responsible for the clot formation they intricate this process of the blood clotting so that is all about the cellular components of the blood now last is the the other the fluid matrix of the blood the fluid matrix of the blood is the blood plasma now what is this blood plasma composed of it is mainly composed of water other than water what are present plasma proteins electrolytes and other nutrients the plasma proteins which are the plasma proteins albumin globulin and fibrinogen all these three are released by the liver albumin is responsible for maintaining the osmotic pressure of the blood fibrinogen plays an important role in the blood clotting and the globulin plays an important role in the immune system then are the electrolytes in the blood plasma there are the certain cations and certain anions cations are the positively charged ions and the major cation of the blood is the sodium ion other cations are potassium ions the anions are the negatively charged ions the chloride ions the phosphate ions the bicarbonate ions these are all present in the blood plasma and the blood plasma has nutrients also the dissolved nutrients the carbohydrates other and other glucose and other nutrients so this is about the composition of the blood plasma that's all about the functions and the components of the blood and in my next video i'll be talking about the hemostasis and the blood groups please subscribe the channel so that you can complete the course of anatomy and physiology with me thanks for watching have a nice day